Howdy folks, Shell Presto here. Today we're going to talk about my 2018 Inktober experience. And of course, I'm going to show you all what I accomplished in a flip through. But before we get to that, the one big question you all have on your mind is, Presto, did you triumphantly complete 31 drawings during Inktober? And the short answer is no. Is that an Inktober fail? Well, maybe, but I think I had a pretty good run. Uh, I had good output for a good part of the month, and I produced some work I really like. So I'm going to say no, not a complete fail, and I'm really happy that I tried to do it this year. This was one of those instances where life got in the way. Um, so for a couple of years, my mom hasn't been walking too good. Um, she's been really hunched over and for a couple of months, maybe even a, a year or a little more, um, she's barely been walking at all. And uh, she finally had a hip replacement, which was scheduled for October. And I thought I'd be able to push through it and do October anyway, but Life gets in the way, and that's okay, um, because, uh, well, <laughs> my mom's the wonderful woman who chases after my son and saves him from self-destruction in my place when I want to draw for an hour or two during the week. Um, so her surgery meant that for part of October, I not only lost my baby chasing help, but I had to take care of Victor and my mom for part of the month. I don't live with my mom, but I live close by, and since my official job title is homemaker and starving artist, I was in a good position to take care of her. Uh, plus, you know, with all of her hours of babysitting me and babysitting my son, I figured it's good to babysit her when she needs it. <laughs> so, love you, mom. Um, the really important thing, though, is that her surgery went really well, and, I mean, she she only had it in October, and she is already walking way better. Um, you know, it's, it's phenomenal. She can finally outpace my son, um, and considering my son was just learning to walk when he could outpace her, that, that was a pretty sad. Um, so yeah, like now we can go for walks on the street together and it's it's great. It's great seeing her walk again. So that that sort of landed right smack in the middle of my October, Inktober efforts. Um, so anyway, I did one Inktober prompt, 11 Drawloween prompts, because uh, I just thought they were... Uh, I think Inktober prompts can be a little too vague, so I thought uh, a lot of the Drawloween prompts uh, really got to the point and they were a little easier for me to approach. Um, and then I stopped to take care of my mom and I finished up the month not with prompts but with uh, just trying to get back in the swing of things and uh, you know, going back to some penciled things that I wanted to ink for a while. Um, I didn't get all those pieces completely inked, but since I was just trying to, you know, get back into a drawing routine, I'm okay with that. Um, my son's sleep schedule also went topsy-turvy during the last couple of weeks. Um, he started climbing out of his crib and his high chair and everything like that, um, but we, uh, we got that sorted out and we got him back in a brand new sleep routine, um, so I'm not going to go into all the details of that one for you. But that also stopped me from getting some stuff done at the end of October. Anyway, I'm going to start my flip through with the odds and ends that I did at the end of the month. Then I'll take you through the start of my month where I used prompts, because that's the meat and potatoes and hey, that's what you're here to see unless you're a vegetarian, then it's the carrots and potatoes? Or if you're still on your Halloween binge, um, it could be uh, your chocolate and your pumpkin spice, specifically pumpkin spice pancakes. 
pumpkin spice pancakes. Anyway, on to the flip through. So this one you might actually remember from my sketchbook summer challenge. Uh, I had done this drawing of Meteora from the Challenger Foundation and uh, I had wanted to go back to ink it and I obviously didn't finish this one. It's not finished here and here, but uh, you know, I started inking it and I like the progress so far. So. Um, this one is another Challenger Foundation piece um, for a later story. Sorry, much, much earlier story. Um, and this is uh, eventually going to make its way into one of our books. And uh, this one's of Ephemera when she's much, much younger. Um, and I didn't finish the background on it, but I did get just her done, so I was pretty pleased with that. And then this was that big Challenger Foundation piece that I was working on. Um, I actually had most of this inked um, going into it, but I kept having problems with uh, Dart. I ended up drawing him three times, uh, so this was the third time and I uh, finally got him done and looking right, and then I added Camistra in the background. And then I just went through and I polished off with some of the details. I finished uh, Hydroman's water trail and gave Bulwark his... Uh, uh, I finished his eyes and uh, rounded off his corners and stuff like this. So just odds and ends touch-ups. Um, and I have... Actually, I'm going to end up having three videos on this being completed. Um, but yeah, so I still have to do the background on this, but all the foreground characters are done now, and I'm thrilled about that. Uh, these two prompts didn't turn out quite so impressively, so I'll start with these two in particular. Um, this one was for the prompt Moon Men from Mercury. Uh, I'm actually going to post a short, cute video about these guys, um, so I'm not going to get into everything about them, but the, the big thing is I was just trying to design aliens um, for the Ascension Epoch, and it didn't turn out quite like I wanted to, because I was thinking about ones that lived on the moon, and then my husband said these didn't look quite like the moon ones, um, but he did say that they'd be uh, a good choice for uh, some of the ones from Mercury, um, so that worked out quite well because I was signing Moon Men and he was like, no, they work better for Mercury. And then, uh, it was supposed to be Moon Men from Mercury. So that all turned out okay. Um, and, uh, for the background on these ones, cause I want to do a background. I had to do it on a separate sheet of paper. Um, but I did one of these, uh, despite him saying, uh, they'd be better for Mercury. I still did the moon, um, so I have the craters and everything, and I really like the texture I got on this one. I also like the aliens I designed, because um, I think they turned out really, really cute, and that's what I was going for, because uh, sometimes you just have to, you know, succumb to the cuteness that you have inside of you that wants to get out on paper. Um, so I did this as the background, and then I... Uh, edited them together in Photoshop on the computer. Um, but I've always wanted to try to do a galaxy uh, sort of background like that using uh, ink and dropping ink onto the page and I, I think that turned out pretty cool. So And I did not get this one done. I was really excited for this prompt, actually. It's uh, the Drawloween Dude Where's Your Shadow prompt. And uh, this is Callie. Um, she has appeared in one of our East Ender Regulars books so far, and she also appears in a con exclusive story, which is actually her origin story. Um, 
and I was going to have a really uh, cool thing with a uh, villain and a spell that had to do with shadows going on here, and it, it just did not get done during this month. So, anyway, on to the uh, completed prompts book, which is more impressive. I also got uh, Camistra's character design done. So I'm pretty thrilled about that. I video uh, video recorded this process, so you'll be able to see that, and I'll detail that in the video. Um, but overall, I needed to get this character design done, and I finally did, so I'm happy. And my husband liked my first attempt at it, which is even better. Uh, this was a drawing of Torrent. I had this probably half inked going into Inktober, um, but I finally uh, finally got this one all wrapped up. Uh, this one's Torrent from the East End Irregulars, and I yeah, really like how it turned out, so there we go. All right, let's get to the part that you guys want to uh, get to, and that's my drawings with the prompts and the well, generally more finished stuff, but I tried to keep myself on a, a once-a-day deadline, so um, one-a-day deadline, so there we go. So I did an entire video on this piece. Um, this was the Drawloween Prompt Haunted Hard Drive, um, and I, I love how this came out, but I'm not going to be around the bush talking about it because, you know, if you want to see the whole process and hear me uh, essentially gush over it, you can go watch the video. Um, but this is probably one of the best ink jobs I've ever done. Um, it was a great way to kick off Inktober. Um, and I don't know that any of the other uh, pieces I've done are quite as good as this, but I, uh, I really like how this one turned out. Uh, this was the only official Inktober prompt uh, I did, and uh, this one was for Poisonous. I wanted to do a different take on uh, the Poison Apple and Snow White, um, so I have the good old Poison Apple, and then I thought it would be cool to just have a little uh, Grim Reaper flying around it. Um, and although I like how this turned out, um, I don't know, I didn't do a lot of depth with the inking because after I had uh, started it, I realized that I wanted a transparency on the uh, poison covering the apple. And then I was like, this would probably be a lot better in watercolor. And I didn't want to go through and turn my Inktober day into a watercolor day. So I just left it as line art. Um, I did a video on this one. Uh, this one's Maureen Maureen. Uh, from an upcoming Martian War Chronicles book. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing the, the textures. Because um, I, I don't do uh, realistic ink very often, where I, I try to capture a lot of the uh, texture and a realistic look of things. So I, I generally like how this one turned out. Like I said, you can see the video for more on that one. I'm not going to sit here and belabor it. Okay, so obviously there were going to be days when I had to be faster and couldn't do full-blown uh, pieces like I had been doing for the first uh, three days. So this one was just a quick sketch. Um, oh, the uh, prompt for the previous one was the Whisper of Waterfront Wharf. Uh, and this Drawloween prompt is, Don't look now, Mom's a werewolf. Um, I could have gone literal with it and had a werewolf mom in it, but I, uh, I was watching a lot of things on Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome, and they were raised by a, uh, they were raised by a wolf. So, uh, top that off with the fact that I have a rambunctious, uh, a rambunctious toddler running around the house and fighting with my animals. Um, and I just, I felt like, uh, you know, seeing a, a dog teaching her 
twin sons to wrestle would be pretty cute. So it's just a quick sketch, but that's what we've got here. Romulus and Remus wrestling like dogs um, while their mother wolf watches over her. So I have an upcoming video that's uh, going to go over this one. It's a quick one. This is uh, my character Skylark. He's a Void Knight. I'd been wanting to design him for quite a long time now. Um, so I'm thrilled that uh, Inktober was the thing that pushed me to do it. Um, I don't have a lot of... Uh, shading or depth on him because I really want to computer color this one um, and I have plans for what he's going to be doing um, when I do color it on the PC but we'll get there like I said I won't belabor it because there's an upcoming video but uh, me myself and AI I really liked this one uh, this one was lights camera axes and I don't like how this one turned out overall, but I like the idea behind it, and I like parts of it. Um, so, one of the characters in our universe who hasn't appeared in a book yet is actually Ozma from The Wizard of Oz. And uh, she's eternally young in Oz, so she comes to uh, our dimension, like the regular Earth dimension, so that she can grow up because Dorothy's told her all about growing up and she's fascinated by it. So she brings the Tin Man with her and at some point he starts malfunctioning because uh, he's essentially fueled by the magic in Oz. So I have a story I'm working on where he actually goes on a rampage um, and then I just sort of fit that idea into the lights, camera, axes and I have him uh, smashing up uh, the the camera and the uh, microphones and stuff like that that these newscasters uh, have because they're reporting on him going on a rampage. And uh, this is my Ascension Epoch Tin Man design here, and I, I do like it. Um, I'll have to share the full design at some point. Um, but there's things I didn't like about this. I, I think his, uh, his arm placement's off here and stuff like that. So, And then I was trying to add depth uh, with my shading down here, and it just didn't look quite right. And I, I, just, I didn't complete this piece entirely because I, I feel like it uh, just wasn't going where I wanted it to go. Um, I was not going to do this prompt. This prompt was for my dentist is a shapeshifter. And I thought that prompt was, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say too silly because I actually like silly prompts, but it just, it wasn't inspiring to me. Um, and then my husband pointed out that Dr. Mindbender in G.I. Joe originally started as a dentist. And I said, ah, oh, but he's not a shapeshifter. And then my husband said, well, you could have Zartan uh, disguised as Dr. Mindbender. So this is the My Dentist is a Shapeshifter prompt. Um, I think it's one of the only two fan art pieces. I haven't flipped through this in a while, so I don't know. Um, one of only two fan art pieces I did for all of Inktober, but... I, I really like how this one turned out. I kind of rushed it because the daily challenge thing, but uh, overall, th this was really fun to do. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Would you consider... Usually when I think of fan art, I think of it being like for a show you like or something. I don't necessarily consider band art fan art, so maybe it's three pieces. I don't know. Depends on your definition of fan art. Um, but I really, really love how this piece turned out. Um, the prompt was pumpkin up the jams. Um, and I, I just did daft punk as pumpkins. Um, I, I just love the colors on this thing. Um, I'm glad that I 
you know, I, I inked it and then I was like, oh, it doesn't feel quite right. Because uh, to me, Daft Punk has to have that really metallic look to it. And, uh, and then I was thinking, oh, how do you, how do you uh, articulate music in a piece? So then I, I did the good old um, Winamp Windows Media player uh, music designs where if you turn on the visualizations uh, it tries to give you like the crazy laser lines of what the music looks like so I did something reminiscent of that and I am really pleased with this one this was a really fun piece to do and I wouldn't have done it if I didn't do Inktober and the Drawloween prompts so worth it <laughs> And then the final one that I did with the prompts um, was Barnabas Collins from Barnabas Collins from Dark Shadows, uh, which is a show that I love. I love to bits, um, and I usually don't like villain characters that much, but there's something about the delivery of the show and. The special effects on the show are really, really good for a daytime television show um, that's as old as it is. It was on in the 60s, I believe. Um, so the special effects were really good then, but they're cheesy for now. Um, and it's amazing to me how, how well the actors took seriously what they were doing. Um, when they, how seriously the actors took themselves and carried themselves for uh, the type of show it was. So I really love Dark Shadows and the um, prompt was Ghoul's Gold and I actually was going to color Barnabas's ring gold and have that be the only color in the picture. But after I had finished this, even though it's not perfect and there's things that I don't like about it, I just liked it black and white and I didn't want to change it. Um, I don't think I've ever tried a portrait in ink, like just ink, and tried to do a lot of rendering um, before. So I was glad that I did this. And I think even though there's a couple things that are... Uh, wonky about the proportions here and there um, that overall I did a good job uh, getting a lot of shading and value out of the ink for this one so I, I couldn't do it I couldn't color the ring and draw attention to that when I liked the overall look of the whole piece so that's it my Inktober 2018 did I manage to do 31 drawings nope <laughs> Uh, but did I do a lot of drawings that I liked? Yes. Yes, I did. And uh, I feel that made it worth it. So will I try to do 31 drawings next year? That's a tough question. Um, I was actually hoping to do more Ascension Epoch related drawings going into it this year. And um, The concept of a completed Inktober demands that you do an illustration a day. And I do ink the illustrations that I do for our books. So I was hoping to get some illustrations done for our books during Inktober. However, a day is a very short amount of time for me to get a full completed uh, illustration done. And uh, I really feel like a it would be short shrifting our readers to rush through a drawing for the sake of a drawing challenge um, as far as publication goes. So then I think, well, I should just do prompts um, and not touch any of our book illustrations so that I don't wreck things that I want to spend a lot of time on. Um, and that's what I did this year. I just did prompts. I didn't really focus on anything that would make it into a book except maybe that Maureen Marine illustration. Um, but 
obviously the Drawloween prompts were really specific and I couldn't bend the Ascension Epoch uh, concepts into each one of those. Um, but because I was flying by the seat of my pants and uh, just looking at the prompt every day and trying to do it, I liked the more concrete prompts. Um, so I guess in an ideal year, I'd have enough of the work that I need to do done so that I can just consider Inktober a project and, uh, you know, I would like to, I would actually like to use the Inktober prompts because they are vague enough that you could uh, really go any concept with them. So what I ideally like to do is look at the Inktober prompts when they come out, which is usually in the last week of September, sit down with the prompts, brainstorm about how we could use our own characters in each prompt, uh, think a little bit about the references um, that I would need to gather to get the poses right and stuff like that, and, uh, and really sit down and have a plan for what I want to draw each day. Because um, one of the really painful things about sitting down and not knowing what you're going to draw, and I usually draw when my uh, son is taking a nap or I stay up after my son has fallen asleep at night, and then I draw. So I usually have a very small amount of time to draw, and references really killed me in the brainstorming, because when you're thinking about what you want to draw, you're not drawing, and it's in my allotted drawing time. So I would literally just start drawing the first thing that came to my mind so I had time to get a drawing done. And, uh, you know, I, if I was drawing when my husband was at work, which is often happens, um, you know, I didn't have someone there to take a picture of me to say like, oh, I want to know what an arm looks like in this position. Um, you know, so I, I didn't have him there to take reference photos for me like I normally do. Um, so that was painful because then I was just uh, winging poses, uh, which can be fun, but not if you're trying to uh, do something that looks neat and professional and clean. Um, and then there's other times when like, you know, for that Daft Punk piece to find the uh, clear picture of the helmet at the right angle to make sure that I was getting all the details might have taken 15 minutes. So that was 15 minutes out of uh, I only had two hours uh, of my drawing time. Um, so stuff like that was really painful. So if I do Inktober next year, I'm going to do it with a definitive plan of what I want to draw each day and any references gathered that I need um, so that when I do want to sit down and draw, I can just sit down and draw. And I think that would make it a much more pleasant experience for me and I'd like to treat it like its own project with uh, no pressure of other looming deadlines. Am I going to do Inktober next year? Well, my mom's surgery proved that uh, I probably shouldn't plan in advance a definite uh, yes or no on that. Um, and you know, anything in life can happen. So uh, hopefully if it's a calm October, I'll be doing it again next year. And if not, it was fun to do this year. Um, I like trying it. It was a fun experience. And, uh, yeah. I'd like to try it again sometime in the future. Um, so how did your uh, Inktober go? Did you try it at all? Um, did you keep up? Did you get your 31 drawings done? Um, did you have fun? I certainly hope if you tried, you had fun. Uh, are you inspired to try it again? You to try it yourself next year. Um, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know how you're all doing. Um, and, uh, you know, the good old like and subscribe, please. Uh, so, have a good night, folks. Presto, over and out.
So I can't blame Inktober because there was no way I'd manage with the new parenting responsibilities that I have, but once upon a time I was notorious for making my and my husband's Halloween costumes. There's none this year, but I thought you fine folks might like a look at costumes past. Like this 90's Maximum Carnage era Firestar. Good old Dr. Midnight. Note that the awesome sidekick, Buka the German Shepherd, does not appear in the comics. Gotham by Gaslight, Blue Beetle, straight out of Elseworlds. And an invented Gotham by Gaslight, Black Canary, that I designed to go with him. Sorry for the grainy picture here, but it's the best I have of us as Green Lantern Guy Gardner, and yours truly as Dazzler. And finally, the coup de gras. My most polished costume was for my husband as signalman, hero of the Martian War, from our Martian War Chronicles series. This, of course, means I didn't have time to make anything for Victor, either, but he was cuting up the floor in his store-bought Ewok costume, so all was well. Hope your October was good, folks. Onward to November, and hope yours is awesome. Presto. Over and out. So the concept of a completed Inktober demands that you do a drawing a day. And I do ink the uh, pieces that I do for our books. So part of me wants to get a couple of... So part of me wants to get a couple of illustrations done.